let's all be honest and say that these are things that happen and that are happening right now. And the reason why they exist is because everyone's been trying to ignore the fact that they exist for so long. Somebody has to talk about them. You know what I mean? Like somebody has to talk about them. Good morning and welcome to this video. My name is Tyler and today we're gonna be doing a little morning read. It's impromptu. I was already reading and I thought, hey, I should turn on my camera. This book is amazing. Let's talk about it. So here we are. We're gonna be talking about Hood Feminism, the one and only. Let's get started. I am on chapter two, which is called Gun Violence, but chapter one, which I just finished, is called Solidarity is Still for White Women. And it's basically about how the feminist movement aids in helping white women progress in society, but it negates all the issues or a lot of the issues faced by minority women and just women of color in general and women in marginalized communities. But you can't really claim to be for all women if the issues that you're tackling are not in an effort to help all women. If it's just for the comfort of white women, you're not for all women. And I loved that it talked about how somehow the feminist movement became about whether or not females should grow hair under their arms and about how women can also become CEOs in companies and although all of that is fine and dandy we can't really talk about that stuff without talking about the fact that a lot of women don't have basic things they don't have access to education they don't have access to resources um, housing and just basic things like that so that's kind of how this book started off and I was like you know what we're starting off real strong we're starting off real strong and sir i'm loving this book so far so i just want to read a little bit of it with you guys hopefully you find some of the stuff interesting and maybe you might want to pick this book up for yourself once again it's called hood feminism by mickey kendall and it is a different perspective on the feminist movement when the obstacles you face vary by race and class, then so do your priorities. After all, for women who are struggling to keep themselves housed, fed and clothed, it's not a question of working hard enough. So when women are talking about the fact that they don't have um, access to education and housing and those basic things, it's not about the fact that they are not working hard enough and that they haven't done enough work to get those things. And something that I oh my god so are my boobs showing feminists and feminism needs to recognize that everything that affects women is a feminist issue every single thing the language surrounding whatever issues feminists choose to focus on should reflect an understanding of how the issues impact varies for women in different socioeconomic positions so when we're talking about let's see there was Oh, okay, so one of these examples would be white feminism can, uh, in, so in this book, she calls feminism feminism, but she also calls it white feminism, and that's because mainstream feminism a lot of the time only benefits white women. So it says, while white feminism can lean in, can prioritize the CEO level at work, it fails to show up when black women are not being hired because of their names or fired for hairstyles. So to me, this means that if you claim to be a feminist and you believe in the feminism movement, you have to understand that these issues affect different women in different ways. In this first chapter, it talks about respectability and the fact that no woman should have to prove that they deserve respect no matter what job she has and no matter what ethnicity, race, or community that she comes from. It says, we can't let respectability politics create an idea that only some women are worthy of respect or protection. So whether a woman works in a corporate office or she is a prostitute, she still deserves respect. Whether you believe 
within yourself and within your religion or whatever that she doesn't if she's a human being if she's a woman she deserves respect no matter what nobody should be fighting for respect nobody should be proving to you that they deserve respect respectability is and should be automatic but a lot of the times it's not Respectability narratives discourage us from addressing the needs of sex workers, incarcerated women, or anyone else who has had to face hard life choices. And when I read this, I just thought about the fact that a lot of the times in society, people look down on women who do sex work, whether that be porn, prostitution, or whatever it is, but they fail to understand that a lot of these women have no choice. So when we're talking about the basic needs for access to education and opportunity, a lot of women, depending on your background, the way you look, um, your ethnicity, your race, some things are just not accessible to you. When we're talking about names and the fact that your name determines whether or not you are worthy of a position in corporate America, women, and it, this is men too, it's not just women, but in this case we're, we're talking about women, but when women come from a certain background they don't have as much access to different opportunities so what do they do they try and earn money in different ways and sometimes that is sex work so people don't do sex work all of the time because they want to and because they love it although there are women out there who do love it and that's great i i don't put anyone down for what it is that they love to do but some people do things to earn money to live and to survive and this just goes back to the way that society is set up so if we're going to talk about the issues that women face, you cannot ignore the fact that some women do things because they have to and not because they want to. So going back to respectability, everyone deserves respect, whether they are out doing prostitution or they work in corporate America. You can't say that someone who has an office job deserves more respect than the other. It, it's not fair when society is set up in a way where some women just don't have that opportunity at all. Too often, mainstream feminism embraces an idea that women must follow a work path prescribed by cisgender white men in order for their labor to matter. When I read this, I had to circle it. I wrote OMG next to it. I completely agree. If a woman is not in a line of work that is respectful in the eyes of straight men and of straight white men they are put down they are seen as unworthy of respect and their safety is at jeopardy which is so sad and annoying and upsetting to be honest with you let's talk about the strong black woman myth and the idea that all black women are strong the fact that black women are supposedly tougher than white women means that we are built to face abuse and ignorance and that our need for care or concern is less pressing And it's so true. The idea that all black women are strong and you're a strong black woman, it puts down the fact that the issues that we face are serious and a lot of the time our safety is at jeopardy. But for some odd reason, this myth has been created, this idea has been created that we're just stronger than all women. We can endure it, we'll be fine. Like no matter what life throws at us no matter what disrespect we encounter on a daily basis we're going to be okay and that is absolutely not true when someone says something to me that's disrespectful and hurtful i hurt just the same as any other woman would i'm not any more strong than the next woman can be you know what i mean i i don't know why it's i don't i don't know why there's been this idea that we are like made of stone we are strong you know what i mean but we're also gentle and we're also sensitive and we have to be strong in order to literally survive in order to make it in this world and to endure the abuse that we suffer all the time on a daily basis from all kinds of people we have to build up this this demeanor and this ability to just 
keep moving, but that doesn't mean that things don't affect us. I don't want for any of what I'm saying to turn anyone off, but it's reality and I hope that everyone is watching this with an open mind. I didn't write these things, but I am talking about them and I think that it's really important to talk about them and to not ignore the fact that they exist. Let's all be honest and say that these are things that happen and that are happening right now and issues that we need to fix as a society. And the reason why they exist is because everyone's been trying to ignore the fact that they exist for so long. I just wanted to say that because I don't want for anyone to get so offended that they, you know, don't want to hear it anymore. It's it's really hard to hear and I understand that, but somebody has to talk about them. You know what I mean? Like somebody has to talk about them and the more you know, the better you can go about changing these things in your daily life. So Anyways, let's talk about white woman's tears and the effect that they have on society. One of my favorite parts in this chapter is where it talks about the power that white women actually have to oppress a man. And it says that it's it's kind of hard for feminists to hear that they do have the power to oppress a man, but specifically a black man. It says, when white feminism ignores history, ignores that the tears of white women have the power to get black people killed while insisting that all women are on the same side it doesn't solve anything look at carolyn bryant who lied about emmett till whistling at her in 1955 if you guys don't know about this case please look it up i don't want to go too far into it but basically emmett till was accused of whistling at a white woman and this was back when that was just not okay and she she kept this story up for years and years and years until she finally came forth and said that that's not what happened. And by this time, Emmett Till was already killed. And it's basically saying that when we ignore the fact that white women do have the power to affect a black man and his life, uh, they have the power to demonize a black man, it's just not gonna help to ignore history because it happened. How does feminism reconcile itself to that kind of wound between groups without addressing the racism that it caused? <sighs> this book is so good. It's so freaking good. It brings up so many different things that I did not expect. And I'm only, this is chapter one, page six. We haven't even gotten into it yet. We got, we got all this to go. Feminism cannot be about pitying women who didn't have access to the right schools or the same opportunities or making them projects to be studied or requiring them to be more respectable in order for them to be full participants in the movement. If you are a woman, you are included in this movement no matter where you come from, no matter what you do you are included in the feminist movement, or at least you should be. But the point is that women of different backgrounds are not always included, which is the problem. Yet mainstream white feminists ignore their own harmful behavior in favor of focusing on an external enemy. Let's talk a little bit about sisterhood really quick. It brings up the fact that feminist and the feminist movement calls for all women to be sisters and it calls for solidarity between all women, but it's oftentimes very one-sided. The problem is that feminism is only helping them. So you're calling for all women to stand up for women, but the very women that you're standing up for is just you, it's not, homeless women, it's not transgender women, it's not women of color, it's just, it's it's for the comfort of, of white women. Mm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm, I'm learning more about the feminist movement as I read this book. I can't say that I've always been super educated when it comes to this stuff. I'm learning, which is why this, I think is a good book to start off with if you're just starting to kind of 
want to learn more about the feminist movement, maybe the history of it, and the holes in it. That's what's interesting to me. I understand that the feminist movement calls for the rights of women and for the basic needs of women, but I want to know what the holes are. Like, what are we not talking about? That's what's interesting to me. It says, sisterhood is a mutual relationship between equals. It's not at all helpful for some white feminists to make demands of women of color out of a one-sided idea of sisterhood and call that solidarity. There's nothing feminist about having so many resources at your fingertips and choosing to be ignorant. Nothing empowering or enlightening in deciding that intent trumps impact, especially when the consequences aren't going to be experienced by you, but will instead be experienced by someone from a marginalized community. The most realistic approach to solidarity is one that assumes that sometimes it simply isn't your turn to be the focus of the conversation. When she said this, I mean, could it be any more clear? Sometimes it's not your turn to be the focus of the conversation. Sometimes it's not about you. Sometimes it's about someone else and that's okay. It's fine. Be on their side for once. Let's talk about them. Let's not talk about how you can feel more comfortable. Let's talk about the fact that they don't even have the basic things that they need to survive and go about daily life and to have a fair chance at life. Let's talk about the opportunities that you were born with are still not had by a majority of women. The basic opportunity that you were awarded when you were born, some women have to work their entire life for. They have to make themselves appear like they're worth it. They're worth education. They're worth housing. But why does someone have to prove that they're worthy of these basic needs though? Why? It's such a good book. My eyes are being open to new things and new information. If you haven't read Hood Feminism, I 100% recommend it. I love it so far and I know you will too. You'll probably learn some new things. It's just seeing things from a new perspective, especially if you do call yourself a feminist and you're all for the feminist movement, please read this book and get a new perspective on what it's not doing and who it's not helping because that's just as important as just being involved, you know? Mm. It's only 9.30 here. I'm just getting started with my day. Good morning to you. If it's morning, good evening, or good night. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.